So you like movies and want to start collecting props and maybe costumes from movies, but what do you collect and where do you start? I got you covered. So there are lots of different categories when it comes to prop and costume collecting. I'm going to take you through a few of those. But first and foremost, the number one rule is just collect what you love. Uh, if you're the only person in the world that likes this thing that you want to collect, then do it. There's nothing stopping you. In most cases, you'll be able to find people who like to collect the same things as you do, or like to cosplay the same things as you do. So that's my number one rule, just collect what you like. Now the first category is real props. These are props and costumes that we use in actual movies. The first of these being screen match props. So these are props that you can actually identify in the movie. You can look at the movie and go, this is the thing that was on screen at this moment. Uh, these are usually hero props or props made for lead actors. They're gonna be expensive. Uh, there's no getting around that. It's, it's, a, it's a one of a kind, it's a sought after item. I definitely don't own any of these kind of props. They're usually up into the tens of thousands for a good prop from a good movie. Uh, if the movie was terrible, the props tend to be a little cheaper. Next are props that are used in the movie, but you can't necessarily screen match them. Something they made a lot of, maybe for an army, uh, that's the kind of movies I like to watch. Uh, so for an army or a big group of extras, and I actually do own a prop of this type. This is a Trojan soldier helmet from the movie Troy. I love this movie, it was a great movie of mine going through my teenage years, and uh, yeah, I just, I really love this movie. I came across this helmet for sale. It is uh, production news. It's made of rubber. It's very squishy, um, but you can see it looks, it really looks the part. There's lots of signs on it that it was used during filming. There are cut marks and things. It was definitely used in a battle in the movie. And despite me having an extremely large head, I can actually get it on. Look at that, it's so badass. It's so cool. Ah! Ah! Oh. Now these types of props are usually a little less than your, your hero props, um, but still quite pricey. Now in terms of where to get things like this, a prop store based in London and LA is your best bet for authentic movie props. Um, unless someone's known someone who was on production and has got it from, from the studio directly, you can never be too sure of the lineage of a thing like this, but places like Prop Store are one of the leading places um, in obtaining items and guaranteeing their authenticity of being used in the movie. So I highly recommend checking them out and I'll leave a link in the description below. The next on the list comes lineage cast props. So these will be props that have been cast from molds used by the studio or have been recast off of an original used piece. I also own a prop of this type so I'll grab that for you. Oh, it barely fits in frame. This is a Jafar staff weapon from Stargate. It is a short version, so it's not the full length version. These were used in a later series of Stargate SG-1. It is cast from the studio moulds, so someone has obtained the moulds from the TV studio and then has run casts on it until the mould has run out. Eventually the moulds do break down, so you can't actually get casts from them anymore. Sometimes then they might recast one of the casts to get moulds. But that's how the lineage of props kind of progresses. You can have different generation casts. This one I got from Etsy, uh, it's just a great piece to have in my collection. This kind of leads me into my second uh, whole category of prop collecting, which is replica props. Uh, there are different types of these. The first would be mass produced ones. Now the companies now are getting a little bit savvy in that collectors want to have a one-to-one -one piece uh, replica of a prop or costume piece. So these are your mass produced pieces. Again, this can be split into a couple of categories. The first would be toys. Uh, there are often a, a ton of toys, especially when it comes to things like Star Wars. There are tons of toy blasters and lightsabers and stuff that get made. Um, they're kind of in the, a subcategory of toys where they're marketed as toys uh, for children, but can make serviceable uh, replica props and costumes if you usually put a bit of work into it. On the flip side of that, a lot of companies now are beginning to make actual replica props. These usually command a bit more of a higher price compared to the toys. Uh, but definitely not as much as the real props and costumes. A good example of this would be the Black series from Hasbro. They're making a lot of Star Wars and Marvel things. I also have an example of this. This is a Black series Stormtrooper helmet. I think I got it for about £40 on Amazon when it was on sale. I don't think you can go wrong really. Look, it's... Sure, it's got the battery compartment at the back. Don't really care about that. 
But yeah, overall, as a thing goes, that's pretty damn good. Of course, you can get more expensive things than that, and uh, the price kind of reflects that. I've got some great ones here. It's a uh, TV remote changer, Sonic Screwdriver from Doctor Who. We've got a Morpher here from Dew Rangers or Power Rangers. This is the Japanese version I got because I, I quite like the Japanese show, but that's quite cool as well. And you've got places like the Noble Collection who make lots of Harry Potter things. Uh, I've got lots of wands and this Deluminator, which is pretty cool. Again, the price is reflected in the quality and for the most part, these are actually pretty good. Uh, things like this are quite heavy. Uh, obviously it lights up, it works. I don't think you can go wrong, really. And then lastly, my favorite in the replica prop category and well, it's most of the things I collect are replica props and it is my favorite from this category and it is fan-made items. I think fans make arguably the best things from whatever franchise that it is. Uh, they usually put in a lot of work. It's usually from the best materials, uh, especially with things like lightsabers, which I collect a lot of. They're usually properly machined out of metal and they're just some of my favorite objects. Things like things like this lightsaber, this lightsaber is from Solo's Hold. It is fully machined aluminium. I put it together and finished it, which you can actually see in a video here. These are some of my absolute favorite items. They're usually done in runs, so sometimes the run is only limited to a certain amount of time, so you have to get in on it. They're usually fairly pricey. There'll be more than the licensed mass-produced ones, but nowhere near as much as a real prop. And for things like this, this is from a cartoon, so there wasn't any. So I find it amazing that people go to such lengths to bring things that only exist on screen and just pull it into real life. That's why I do what I do and build props and costumes because I just think it's awesome. In fact, most of the things you see behind me over here are fan made. I guess you could split this also into two categories which are kits and finished props. For the most part, the best value for money you can get is buying a kit and finishing it yourself. I, of course, love doing this. Uh, it's the thing I do most. I love supporting artists' work when they put a lot of work into making a master of something, usually a helmet, I like collecting helmets, and then they mold and cast it in a resin plastic and you get that kit to finish. This kit's like this beautiful Star Wars Episode 3 pilot helmet. I, I love this thing, uh, it's something I'm going to be finishing this year, but this is the raw kit. It's just so well sculpted, there's some finishing work to do, um, but yeah, that's the kind of thing I like to do in my spare time. I may go more into resin kits in a little bit, but yeah, I love these so much. I don't usually buy finished things because I like doing it myself but that is the other option you can pay someone to finish the kit for you and end up with a lovely finished and sometimes custom replica piece. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at diving into collecting props and costumes. I hope I've covered a few of the different avenues. If you do think of any others please comment down below. I will leave links down below to some of my favourite places to go to get things like this. And do tell me down below what do you like collecting? I hope you enjoyed this one and of course I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.